to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where President Felis Tisekedi has agreed to meet his Rwandan counterpart, Paul Kagame, for talks. Angola, which is mediating between the two sides, says the aim is peace in Eastern DRC, where heavy fighting between the Congolese army and M23 rebels is again driving displacement and regional tensions. Kinshasa and others have accused Rwanda of supporting the M23 rebels. That's allegations that Kigali denies. DRC's east is rich in resources from gold and diamonds to coal tan. But there are now fears that the situation could escalate further as United Nations peacekeepers began withdrawing this week. The DRC government says the UN forces haven't done enough to protect civilians from armed groups and militias in the area. The latest fighting broke out close to the main city, Goma, in the neighboring towns of Sake, Shashan, and Burimana. Hundreds of thousands of people headed for Goma in the hope of finding food, water, and shelter. When Claudine arrived with her two children at this camp on the outskirts of Goma, she felt relief, but only briefly. She's one of the newest internally displaced persons here. The UN estimates that the fighting has driven 800,000 people to seek refuge in this city alone. Despite Claudine being a fresh face at camp, the 20-year-old is not new to war. She was born into the conflict and it continues to rob her of her loved ones. I saw them kill my friend. We were on our way to Masasi and there was a lot of gunfire. That's when my friend got shot in the head. Claudine is running from the M23 rebels, whose resurgence in recent years has fueled violence and humanitarian crises in the area. With the rebels gaining more and more ground inland, the camps further east are buckling under the pressure. And their advance makes Claudine fearful that it's only a matter of time before the conflict catches up with her. I'm scared. When I hear that M23 is getting closer, I feel that things are not okay in my body. In the capital, Kinshasa, the focus is on diplomacy. After previously accusing Rwanda of backing M23 rebels, Congolese President Felix Gisekedi has extended an olive branch, saying he's now open to meeting the Rwandan counterpart. Kigali has consistently denied any links to M23. Talks between the two sides have failed before, and civil society groups are not optimistic that diplomacy can do much to change reality. Here in the camp, every day, there are six deaths, either because of the war, disease, or famine. Do you want the Congolese people to keep dying? Some die in the battlefield. Some die because they have nowhere to flee. Others are dying because they're in the camp, yet they're fleeing there because they're afraid of death. But here too, it's the same thing. The UN stabilization mission MONUSCO admits that the DRC crisis is one of the most neglected in the world. The mission will leave the country by the end of the year, leaving more security questions open. MONUSCO has the protection of civilians at the heart of its mandate. Its gradual departure will certainly have an impact on humanitarian operations, especially in terms of access. For those in the camp, the biggest challenge is a clear way out of the conflict, either through diplomacy or military action. The M23 rebels seem determined to take over more territory, meaning one thing for Claudine and her family. Things could get even worse here. Joining me now is DW's Isaac Mugabe, who has been closely following developments in the DRC for years. Hello, Isaac. Thanks for joining us. Fighting in the DRC has been going on for years, but what's driving the recent upsurge in the conflict? Well, I think there are a number of factors that have led to the recent upsurge in fightings in Eastern Congo. But to point out, the main one is that the lack of commitment from the government in Kinshasa to deliver much needed services closer to the people of Eastern Congo. They feel they've been, I mean, isolated, they've been left out, their, their needs are not being answered effectively by the government in Kinshasa. And also on the side of those fighting the government itself, like the M23, they see the government of Kishasa 
led by President Felix Sekedi as lacking commitment to fulfill on the many promises they have agreed on for many times. Uh, uh, they seek Sekedi backtracking or not even uh, implementing them like they had agreed. And so they are left to defend themselves amid attacks mm -hmm. from the government. So they say, look, this is one person who wants us to talk or to embrace peace, but at the same time, we are getting attacks from the government. And again, we can't rule out the fact that now there are many players coming into the conflict from regional right. re regional countries and, you know, blocks. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to more of that in a bit. Uh, but you mentioned the M23, which is a name we keep hearing. Who are they and why are they fighting the Congolese army? Well, the M23 get the name from the failed peace agreement of March 23rd, 2009, and they cut it short to M23. But initially, they were called the National Congress for the Protection of the People. However, these days, many people think that the M23 is a rebel group supported by Rwanda, which is absolutely wrong. It's a group that is fighting for the interests of Congolese Tutsis, who are predominantly Kenyan speaking. And, uh, well, the group itself, formally, the fighters were supposed to have been integrated in the National Police and Army, and the political wing of the National Congress of the People that gave birth to M23 was supposed to be given posts and positions in the government. So, mm. fast forward, the government in Kinshasa didn't implement this agreement. There's a lot of uh, countries that believe that M23 is being funded by Rwanda. Uh, you're saying that's not correct, or what are you saying? Well, we, th th many countries, and actually even the UN in its report has said so. Of course, allegations or accusations that the government in Rwanda has always denied. But whether or not the government supports the M23 shouldn't be the point, because the M23 itself says it's fighting for its own existence, just like the existence of its people, just like many countries in the world say for our survival, we need to fight for what rightly belongs to us or where we belong to. And of okay. course, even Rwanda has interest in saying to support them so that they're not kicked out of their territory to come into Rwanda because Rwanda sees them or considers them as Congolese. Talking about addressing the root cause, DLC President Felicia Sakedi says he would accept a meeting with his Rwandan counterpart Paul Kagame to resolve the crisis. Could such a meeting actually bring peace to Eastern DRC? Well, to be optimistic, that could be the starting point, because he only said that recently at a press conference in Kinshasa. But all along, he has been saying he will never talk to Kagame, even if they meet in heaven. He's on record saying that. So <laughs> I think now we are seeing he's under so much pressure that people are saying, hey, you have to meet with Rwanda. And ideally, that's part of the solution, Eddie, that Rwanda has to meet with, Rwanda has to sit down with Congo and all neighboring countries, including Uganda, to really map out a peaceful way, a peaceful solution, to, not only to see, to yeah. deal with the M23, but also the other rebel groups who have wreaked havoc in the country, who have brought so much misery to the people of Congo, who yeah. are really have no plans really to lay down their arms until, until many, many years. They keep on fighting. Yeah. So I think it would be a starting point for the two leaders to sit together and genuinely address the issues affecting the Congo. Right, because we're talking about a, uh, a fighting that has been going on for decades, right? Um, here's what I want to find out briefly from you before you go. How is the ongoing fighting affecting the stability of the DRC and, of course, the region as a whole? Enormously. When elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. We are seeing an influx of Congolese, you know, going or crossing into neighboring countries, Rwanda, Uganda, also south in Zambia, and all the countries that they, they're bordering with. And by the way, prices of commodities, including food prices, have soared also in big cities like Kinshasa. You can imagine a town that was relying on the eastern Congo to deliver food commodities like Irish potatoes, like onions. They have to, to import such basic foods really that's on the way to go i think it has right. the conflict has the fighting has affected all countries in many many ways especially the refugees the ordinary people who have to run for their life every day every night without hope for returning and that's the big question eddie that's the big problem will they ever return to their homes it's just you and i to watch and see whether indeed peace will prevail in the congo right dw's isaac mugabe thank you very much for your insights Thank you, Eddie.